Hey, what's up guys, so you know it's best. Another year and another review. Today I'm gonna to be reviewing the iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus. Now we're in the two year cycle, so we're in the S year, what Apple calls it. Basically, this is where they focus on speed enhancements and focusing on making the internals better from the camera to the processor and making that experience better where they're focusing on a brand new total design. And as you can tell, all the buttons and ports are in the same location. So on the left-hand side, you have the volume buttons and the mute, unmute switch. And also on the right-hand side, you'll find the power button and the SIM card slot, and at the bottom, you'll find the headphone jack, the lightning port, and also the speaker. Now visually you can't tell the difference between last year's iPhone and this year's iPhone unless somebody has the new rose gold colored iPhone, which does look a lot like pink. It looks straight up pink to me. Um, but you do have that option now to get with the new phones to kind of distinguish yourself uh, from all those people who have that old, old ancient technology from last year. I'm just joking on that. Um, but that's really the only way you can tell unless you see the S on the back of the phone that stands for speed. And speaking of speed, it's going to talk about the internals. These new phones have the new A9 processor, which is screaming blazing fast. One of the, if not the fastest processor on a cell phone on the market right now. And they also have put the M9 motion co-processor right on side of that. And that should help with performance overall. And you'll also find two gigabytes of RAM in these new iPhones. So with the RAM and the processor combined, you're going to find it just a more steady experience on the iPhone while running iOS 9. So from multitasking to playing the latest games and even editing 4K video and iPhone movie, you're going to find the, the experience to be very consistent and any type of lag or performance issues should be very far in between. But now let's go to talk battery life. Now surprisingly both of these new iPhones feature smaller batteries than last year's iPhones. That's because 3D Touch and the new display technology is taking up a little bit more space inside of the phone so Apple had to make a compromise. But in real world testing, these smaller batteries really didn't make performance worse and definitely didn't make it better. So it was around the same. I still needed to put my iPhone on the charger at the end of the night. Plus with the new low power mode in iOS 9, at about 20% your phone would turn off some background tasks and also different animations to kind of stretch out your battery life. But that's not it with the battery because right when I was getting ready to publish this video, we have another gate that has surfaced and this is called chip gate. And this chip gate is about these new iPhones having a chance to feature two different chips inside of them. So both of them are going to be A9 chips, but one is going to be manufactured by Samsung and the other will be manufactured by TSMC. Now there's no way for you to choose which chip you're going to get. It's basically just a luck of the draw. And what other people have been finding out is that if you have an iPhone with the Samsung chip inside of it, you're going to get worse battery life than an iPhone with the TSMC chip inside of it. And really this is working out to between about 5 and 8%, depending on what you're doing with your phone. So is this going to cause Apple to have to recall the iPhones? No. But this is a kind of a difference between you being out and about and having to search for an outlet with a charger or just being able to make it home just barely with enough battery life to plug your phone in and not have to wait for it to restart. Now if you really want to get to the one new magical feature of this new iPhone, this this year, that new magical feature is going to be 3D Touch. And so the way that 3D Touch works is that once you do a long hard press on a display, it's going to give you a little haptic feedback, so a little vibration right where your finger is on the display. And it'll bring up a quick action menu. So if you do this on the phone app, it'll bring up some of your favorite contacts. If you do it on the Instagram application, it'll give you a few options to be able to go directly into your direct messages to do a search or to view your timeline. Or if you do it on your Maps application, you can very quickly get directions back home or you can share your location with somebody just by pressing that on this little quick action menu. So 3D Touch is really meant to kind of save you time, save you a few seconds at a time. So 3D Touch isn't just limited to the home screen. You can actually use it inside of applications with their feature they call Peak and Pop. So say you're in Safari, you want to preview a link, you can do a 3D Touch on there. It'll give you a little vibration feedback, uh, but then it'll give you kind of a quick preview of what that link is. And now you can choose to either go all the way into that link just by pressing down a little bit harder on the display, and it'll go ahead and pop that, that link or that web page fully and you'll be able to browse it normally uh, or you can actually just use your finger and slide up and you'll get a number of different options at the bottom of the screen to do a number of certain actions so you can do this inside of messages as well so if somebody sends you an address you can do a peek and pop to see where that address is on the map and if you want to just interact with that that location a little bit more just go ahead and press down a little bit more and it'll go ahead and pop you into the maps application and it works when you're browsing photos and videos and also using the mail applications to go through numerous emails at a time that peak and pop feature really does come in handy. So overall guys, 3D Touch is not gonna be one of those features that I think is gonna sell people on the new iPhone, like they're not gonna buy it just for 3D Touch. Uh, but I think that as third party developers start to use it more and, and incorporate it more inside of their applications, we can probably see some better things come out of it. So again, we're still in the very early days of 3D Touch. Right now, it's just something really nice to have. And so it'll definitely be interesting to see where 3D Touch is about six months from now. Now very quickly, I'm gonna to touch on Touch ID. 
get what I did there quickly. Touch Anyway, uh, Touch ID this year is actually maybe even a little too fast. Now, that's a good and a bad thing because Apple has definitely increased the performance with it. So as soon as you lay your thumb on that Touch ID home button, your phone is practically unlocked. It feels like the phone is gonna be unlocked before your display actually turns on. That's how fast it works. So you gotta be kind of mindful if you're just trying to check the notifications on your lock screen because if you do use that home button, it's probably just gonna go ahead and unlock that phone totally and take you to your home screen. So uh, uh, people have been mentioning just use the power button or just to very quickly tap on that home button. And now moving on, it's gonna talk about the cameras because both of the cameras on these new iPhones have been improved. The front facing camera now is a five megapixel shooter that does have this uh, true tone flash that you can do now. So basically it's gonna flash a display um, in a color that's gonna help brighten you up in low light situations. And the selfies are definitely gonna look a lot better using one of these new iPhones. But also too, the rear facing camera has been bumped up in megapixels to 12 megapixels. So it's gonna be helpful if you wanna blow up your images. But most people aren't gonna be doing that. You just want a camera that's gonna be able to work. And this new iPhone is, is very consistent. And this is a common thing that I found with iPhone cameras is that they don't always excel in individual areas over other phones in the market, but they're a very reliable camera. And that's the same thing with these new iPhones. So no matter the time of the day that you're gonna be using it in or what situation or how good a photographer you are, uh, you should be able to get a decent shot with these new phones. So they're gonna be a little bit sharper than last year. Also too, the colors are again, remain a very natural tone. So nothing's gonna be overblown or too overly saturated. Um, so you're gonna find that the images look great, but also the video is gonna look even better, especially with the addition of 4K video recording. So the ability to record at 4K at 30 frames per second allows you to get some really nice shots. Now it's gonna be a little bit shakier than normal. Um, so all the video I'm showing you here is with the iPhone 6S Plus that does have optical image stabilization, where the regular iPhone 6S doesn't have optical, it just has software enabled video stabilization. So if you're really gonna be taking a lot of 4K video, you probably wanna go with the 6S Plus. And so as you can see, the 4K is some of the best 4K on a camera, but you do wanna be kind of wary about which storage option that you get with the iPhone, because if you do go with the 16 gigabyte, you're not gonna be able to take as much 4K, obviously, so you probably find yourself running into situations where you may run out of storage, but you're probably gonna to wanna to go with the at least a 64 gigabyte version to be able to have plenty of room for your videos. Now the other new feature that Apple introduced with the cameras this year is called Live Photo. Now Live Photo is basically the camera taking a three second video clip. So once you press down the shutter button, it's gonna take 1.5 seconds of video before and 1.5 seconds of video after the picture is actually taken. And then it will make this little file that you can actually use to set as your wallpaper for your home screen or your lock screen. And then you can use 3D Touch to actually play it. And it moves just like a, a GIF or a GIF, how you wanna say that. And so I use this feature for the first couple of days and then the novelty really works off pretty fast. So it's kind of cool to show off, but I mean, I don't really see this as something I'm going to be using consistently at all, but it's in your camera, so you can definitely use it if you want to. So overall, guys, these new iPhones are exactly what we were expecting from them. Besides 3D Touch, I find that this is something along the lines that every couple of years, Apple has really just increased the performance with these new phones. And the addition of iOS 9, where you do have some new features where multitasking is a little bit different, even though you still don't have a close all button in the multitasking menu, which just makes me mad. Um, but you'll find different things like spotlight search being approved, where you have access to some of your recent contacts and be able to see locations nearby you. So you can just do a lot more on that one single screen. Siri is gonna be smarter. Um, um, and then when it comes to the hardware, this phone is a very, very fast phone. So this phone is not gonna win new people over, but I think this is a phone for people who are already used to the, the, the iPhones and the, and the Apple ecosystem are really gonna like this phone, especially if they didn't buy last year's iPhone. But if you haven't been a fan of iPhones, I mean, I don't see this phone being the one that's gonna change you, except if you really just want one of the best smartphone cameras on the market right now. Other than that, Apple just really has maintained a position towards the top of the smartphone market. And depending on who you are, you may find it to be the best phone. Uh, but for me, I really found it to be one of the top phones that, again, just does a little bit of everything very, very well. But that's it for me. I'm going to wrap up this review of the new iPhones. Leave a comment down below what you think about these phones and also this video review. And also make sure you do follow me on my social networks, especially my Facebook fan page. I'll be posting some pictures straight from the iPhone on there. And also, too, I did make a video just showing off some of the 4K video recording. I'll leave that link down below in the description box. You can check that out. But let me go ahead and sign off. Thanks for watching this video, and I will catch you later. Peace.